Ten seconds. Good evening, you are watching Woman of Power TV Omaha. And as always, we have a foundation lesson from Genesis unto Revelation, which is called the cornerstone. Remember, Jesus is the cornerstone. But every day we have a daily topic. So get ready, call your neighbor, call your friend. It's time now for the Woman of Power Hour is on. Get a cup of tea, a cup of water, put your legs up, relax, get comfortable. A pen and a piece of paper will be very useful for you because it's now the woman of power time is on. So today we will be coming from Isaiah chapter 41 from the 10th verse and to the 18th verse. And our topic today is I am anointed. So today we said, I'm anointed, and we are coming from Isaiah chapter 41 from verse 10 and to verse 18. Let's see how we can walk down Jesus' lane today. So as we're going to go, I just wanted to tell you that Jesus loves you. And I know that he's a very good friend of you, and he's a very good friend of me. And so I am here not to preach to you or to tell you nothing less than what I've been known and heard since I'm a child growing up, and is that Jesus is coming back. There's only one thing that is much greater, and the greater part is these days and times that we are living in now it's right here in the Bible so we know today and it is proven that this is not a storybook but it is something that is real and Jesus is real so let's talk together the Bible say let's reason or come and let us reason today Thus said the Lord, and therefore we're going to go down to talk about. I'm, and you know, I want you to remember today about this song that said, Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. So let the power of the Holy Ghost that fall on me, let it come and flow through this TV on you. So let this power today of Jesus Christ be your friend and be with you. All right, and so we are going today again, going down to uh, Isaiah chapter 41, and we're starting from the 10th verse, and we're going to try to make it through the 18th verse. And I always try to throw a little thing here and throw a little thing there because I want to be in today's days. As it was in the day of Noah, and Jesus says, I am the same today and forever because I change it never. And so remember the topic is I'm anointed and remember to have a pen and a piece of paper. Okay. And it says here, fear not, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So the Lord Jesus Christ is telling you today, fear not. No matter what hell is breaking loose, fear not. No matter what gang is passing through town, fear not. No matter what the situation is, fear not. Whether the situation has been greater, whether the situation has been smaller, whether the situation is something that you can handle, he is telling us, me and you, fear not because he is with you. He said, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. You know, there's a song that says, I am weak, but thou art strong. And he tell you, Jesus, he will keep you from all wrong. So you're not supposed to fear because he said he will strengthen you. He said, I will help thee if you need clothes, if you need food, if you need shelter. No matter what you need, Jesus will give it to you. You know, I want to tell you this little thing. Just throw it in right in the midst of this because he says, I will uphold thee with the right hand of thy righteousness. You know, I went to the Bahamas. I, I said that last week because I, I missed, I think, two. I 
don't remember if it's two recording I missed because I was in the Bahamas. There was a hurricane, so whether or not I wanted to come home, it was not available for me to come home because there was a hurricane. And there's a lot of people from the U.S. that calls me to check upon me to see what's going on if the hurricane. Yes, the hurricane has really tore up the islands, but God was so merciful and good to me that the part that I was only uh, got it with water and just a little bit of wind. But, you know, just a little bit of water. But beyond me right there, before me and over me, everything all torn up. Hallelujah. So what the place that I was, they were actually collecting stuff to send to the other part. Because as you know, Bahamas is not just one little piece. I think it's about five different islands. I could be wrong. And so the other islands get torn up real bad, real bad. But God was merciful to me. I mean, I couldn't leave if I want to. I didn't want to anyways. And so uh, I had to stay. But I wanted to tell you something. I went on the street to preach on Saturday morning. I was coming Saturday evening at 3 o'clock, and I get up at 4 o'clock and get ready. And, and I had a, a, a lady there, Miss Shelley. Oh, I thank you, Miss Shelley. I know you as a watcher of this program on, on, on YouTube and live stream. And I, and I thank you for that, and, and I'm happy to see you. How are you doing? I hope you are holding the fort over there. But Miss Shelley calls me, and she says, I have to keep this up uh, uh, on Saturdays and we went out on 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 the street right there where the sea was and from 5 a.m. in the morning and we were preaching until 10 a.m. we was out there and nothing went wrong everything was a blessing but I wanted to say something to you I was talking to another person from the Bahamas on the phone just now and I was telling them my intention and determination. I have like five zero barrels in my basement with all clothes. And all those is to be distributed over there. And so I was looking for a, a cheapest shipping place. As we know, uh, uh, my viewers here on, uh, on uh, Omaha here, that we don't have a shipping place here. So we had to go through New Jersey or we have to go through Kansas City or we have to go through Florida. And so I was just talking because New Jersey told me $1,800. And as, as, as I'm going to tell you now on, on, on TV land, I don't get much uh, um, um, donations. Most of my donations goes through my pockets. I used to get a lot when I used to go out on the street more often, but I got sick and, and, and I'm going to get well and go back out on the street very often again. But I'm telling you, New Jersey said $1,800. Well, I'm shopping around. I know $1,800 is out there with my name on it, with the ministry of Jesus Christ on it, because there's a need. There's a need. It's a great need. And, 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 and I want to tell you something, because the need is for Jesus Christ, and the people willing is willing to accept Jesus Christ. Now, they don't know about all these clothes that I'm packing up, trying to send to them. No, no, no. They don't know about all these things that I'm trying. But when I sit back and I look and see how willing and how they want, they hunger. They are so hungry for Jesus Christ. I remember when Jesus went on the mount, when he turned a fire five loaves of bread and, and, and the five loaves of fishes, and, and he feeds them. He feeds the multitude. And so I think feeding them with the word and feeding them with, with, with carnal food and spiritual food, I think that's a wonderful thing to do, a very wonderful thing to do. So I wanted to say this to you. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And so Jesus' righteousness is not carnal. Jesus' righteousness is spiritual. And he will uphold you right here in the U.S. You know, we always talk about, oh, you know, we don't know how to appreciate things that we get in the United States and all that. But I kind of somewhat take it back a little bit because you know what? We, yes, we don't know how to appreciate whatever we want, but we are also at the level where we understand what's going on. You cannot feed a baby um, meat. You have to feed a baby milk and watch the baby grow. 
And so with us here, if we don't see what's going on, we cannot blame somebody because I remember Elisha was in that house and he had uh, uh, his helper with him. And, and, and when his helper did not see the Holy Spirit, but the helper see the carnal host that was about to overtake them. And Elijah had to cover his face and says, Lord, please open the spiritual eyes for him to see the harmony of us that is going to overtake them. And so, therefore, I want to tell you that he said, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. All you have to do is try. I'm not telling you live right. Try to live right is enough. Because if you try, Jesus Christ will fix it for you. I have known if you put one foot in that Jesus Christ will put the other foot in for you. All you have to do is have a make up mind. Everyone is eligible for forgiveness with Jesus Christ because he said in Matthew, I am a friend of the sinners. And so you are eligible for Jesus Christ to give you forgiveness. The problem is we mortal men. We don't know about giving forgiveness because even unlike myself too, sometimes I said, oh, I forgive you. But I, I said to Danielle, okay, it's all right. She, she did something wrong. But later on, I said to her, did you remember when you did? And did you remember when that, oh, you think I forget? I don't forget you. We all have that in our nature. But guess what? Jesus Christ is, he came down here as human. But he did not have that in his nature. He don't have that in his nature at all. Never did, never will, never have. And so if you allow Jesus Christ to cleanse you, and when he's going to cleanse you, don't worry about he cleansing you from the outside because that sometimes doesn't work. If he cleanses you from the inside out, we call that in our, in, in, in our country in Jamaica as a purge. If he purge you from the inside and purge you and it comes out. It's the song said, Jesus is working on the inside. Oh, what a change on the outside. And if you allow him to work from the inside, I guarantee you that what's coming out on the outside is going to be beautiful. It's going to be something wonderful, something that every person you pass or start a conversation with want to have have because it is so beautiful you are going to be the beautifulest person there ever been in Omaha or around the world I say it and so it says behold all they that were incense against thee shall be ashamed and confounded they shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall perish all those that incense all those that think about you bad all those that put logs in your way, all those that bring your name that didn't belong over there, all those that stab you in the back, all those that lie on you, all those that do everything that is not like of God. They are going to be ashamed and confounded. What I think about confounded, when I think about confounded, I, I think of they're going to be uh, uprooted. They're going to be uh, shown, you know, somebody under, it, it said if you have a light under the bushel, then that light is going to be uh, uh, shown on a hilltop further on down. And if you hide the truth, it must come out. It might take 100 or 30 or 40 years, some guys in prison for 48 years and the truth comes out some guys in prison for 30 years 50 years but the truth do come out and when the truth come out it is going to set you free and so the incense against thee shall be a shame whoever that incense is going to be whether your sister your brother your ex-husband your friend the gang member the ones who, who smoke weed or or the ones who tell a lie on you whoever that incense uh, is going to come from is 
going to and shall be confounded. The truth must come out. And they shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee, strife with thee shall perish. I remember I went someplace and a lady tells me, she says, I see somebody don't like you. You know, she was prophesying to me. And yes, it was an American church. Hello there. And, and she said, and the person that don't like you and lie on you, it's going to come to light. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I don't know who it was at that time or I don't know who it is probably right now because so many people lie on me sometimes. But she tells me whoever does that is going to be confounded, is going to come to truth, is going to come to light, and it's going to happen. But let me tell you something out there on TV land. If Satan don't tag at you, then you're not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. If Satan don't tag at you, then something is wrong. He he has to battle with you. In Daniel 10 tells you about the prince of Persia. When Daniel was at the riverside, whatever he asked God for, the Lord says, I knew it before you even say it. Once it, becomes to, once it comes to your heart, I knew about it and I granted unto you. But the prince of Persia, Hold on to Gabriel with the message to come back to Daniel. But there was a second angel, Michael, that get up off the throne and said, Hey, get up off Gabriel. Let him bring the answer to the child of God who is waiting on it. So you don't have to worry about the strife. They shall perish. He said, Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. We know what not zero, big fat zero, not. It's going to be not. In times like this, we do need a savior. And we have to know in times like this, we so see how the world is running right now. We see who is going to be the president. We see what is going on with all those that fighting to be in the president's seats. We see what's going on with ISIS. They kind of calm down now and, and killing people, but we don't know what their next move is going to be. We see what's going on over with Israel and Palestine. And as we see, there is three fighting going on with the chosen people the israelites uh, uh, and the christians are fighting and so they don't realize uh, the palestine palestines coming in at the same time but because they are so busy fighting each other and they are all we were talking about that last night they are all the seed of abraham they are all the seed of Abraham, but they fight in each other. And because they are so distracted in fighting each other, they don't see the enemy coming in. And that's what's happened with us right here at home, right here in Omaha I'm talking about. I see a church, I tell the pastor, I said, okay, well, no night service keeps mostly here in Omaha. Why don't you do it? He asked me my opinion uh, about uh, church on Sunday. You know, we have two or three people at church sometimes, six and seven sometimes. And I suggested, I said, well, why don't you have a Sunday night service like every Sunday night? Not when you're trying to make some money. I'm not talking about you call a pastor from other town because he needs to make some money and he's your friend. And so you call him, come on over, let me do a four o'clock service. And then you bleed the few members that you have here to make some money for your friend. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a legitimate, a legitimate Sunday night service. And so you open your church door for all the churches that do not have services on Sunday night. Everyone that is a child of God can come and worship together, as the Bible says, in the beauty of holiness. Can we try that in Omaha, please? Do you think it will work in Omaha? Give me a call, 402-210-2523, JYLM1169 at yahoo.com. It's right at the bottom of the screen right there. You will see I don't pray for you. Remember that. I pray with you. But come on, let us reason together because I know that I am anointed. And I know you on TV land is anointed too. Do you understand what it is when two anointed people come together? Can you imagine what will happen when a bunch of anointed people get together? Oh, it will be the day of Pentecost. 
Hallelujah. We will talk in all li- different languages. Somebody say that we are drunk. But no, we are g- filled with good wine, the wine of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine what Omaha would be like if all of us from different churches just come together? Oh, my God, in the beauty of holiness. Oh, we would, we would bring heaven down here. That would what happen. So let's do for the challenge if you are watching this TV program. Let's go for the challenge and see how would it be, what would it happen. Don't follow. If your pastor tell you don't do it, then your pastor have a problem. If your pastor tell you don't do it, pray and seek the Lord and listen what the Lord will say. I would really, really appreciate you to fast for one hour to take this that I'm saying to you in consideration or help us go out on the street. I would love for you to come on out on the street with me and to tell Jesus, uh, tell people about Jesus and his love. You don't have to come with me. Hey, you can go by yourself. You can make a team from your church. Even if you watch this TV program and you get saved by my TV program, there's a couple people that call me and tell me that they got saved because of this program. So if you got saved because of this program, ha, huh, wouldn't you go out on the street and tell somebody about Jesus and his love, knowing that he's the savior of your soul. And it's because of him that you are alive today. You did not have to wake up. Hallelujah. Some person want to wake up, but cannot wake up because of Satan take away. Hallelujah. Their life from them. And because of Jesus Christ, your 10, hallelujah, fingers are working. Your lips and your eyes are working. Your ears is working because of Jesus. You can say to somebody, hey, give me a cup of water. Hallelujah. Somebody lying down in the nursing home cannot even ask for a cup of water. Yes, I'm talking about I am anointed today. And because you are anointed right here in Isaiah, but it's in 61 said, I am anointed to preach the gospel, to bind up the brokenhearted. Don't you want to go out on the street and tell somebody there is hope. There is life. Don't be depressed anymore. Because I seen, hallelujah, on the billboard that it says that the number one one killer, hallelujah, in the United States, hallelujah, is being depressed. Don't you want to go out there and bind up the spirit of depression? It's a spirit, y'all. It's a spirit, and it don't belong to us. It do not belong to us. I am anointed today. Our topic, not only say it, but say it with me. I am anointed. I'm anointed. I am anointed. Say it like you mean it today that I am anointed. Say it with power. Decree it. If you don't think that you're anointed, decree it. Place your hand on yourself and say, I am anointed today. Place your hand on your heart and say, I am anointed today. I am anointed to bind up the broken heart, to set the captive free. I am anointed today to tell of Jesus and his love. I am anointed today because God has given me life. He has given me one more chance to preach or to teach or to talk about his love. Yes, I am anointed today. And the 13th verse says, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Did you remember over here at the 10th verse that we said, I will strengthen thee. Now he says right here that I will hold thy right hand and fear not. He said unto thee, I will help thee. He also say on the 14 verse, for not fear not the worm Jacob and ye men of Israel. For I will help thee, said the Lord, and thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. We know that Israel is the chosen tribe. The chosen generation. And we also know that we are Gentiles. But one thing that we already know and we are supposed to know. And if you do not know, I am telling you today. That we are grafted in. We have grafted in into this man Jesus. And he loves us with an everlasting love. He said he comes, hallelujah, not for say. He didn't come for this, for the, uh, um, for the, uh, I'm sorry. He didn't come for the person that is not sick. He come for the sick 
person. He comes to heal. Hallelujah. He comes to set free. He comes to make what is wrong right. He comes to make the crooked pathway become straight. He comes for the corner to come to be straight. He comes for all who that is forbidden to be of good courage just because of Jesus Christ. I'm almost out of time, but I want to tell you this little part. He said, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp, refreshing instrument, mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as trough. There won't be any more hills in your life at all. There will always be level in your life. What is your ill today? I am anointed. What is your ill today? You are anointed. You are anointed to cast it down and make it a trough. What is your ill today? I'm telling you. Your ill is to be of good courage this morning. He said in the 16th verse, Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. He said, Rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. If you rejoice in the Lord, you shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel is Jesus Christ. Rejoice and be glad because he is your savior and he is the only one that can save you. I often hear Pastor Watson say, man don't have a hell or heaven to put you. But I know that Jesus Christ is the control of heaven and he is the control of hell. Let me tell you all, when he died on the cross, he went to hell and he took away the key from death and the grave. Satan have no more dominion over us. No, he don't. Jesus Christ, he is the one that have us all in the palm of his hand. And he said down on the 17th verse, he said, when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. But on the 18th verse, he said, I will open rivers in high places, hallelujah, and fountains and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I am almost out of time, but I want to tell you today, seek a friend before you need a friend. Call upon him and he will answer you. Jesus Christ is coming back. In time like these, we all need a savior. He said this is perilous time that we are living in. Please try and get saved because I know that Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back with his hands full of reward to pay every man, every boy, every girl according to your work today. And if your work, as long as you work, it's a penny a day. And I want to tell you today that touch yourself and say, I am the anointed one. And believe that you are the anointed one. Because the only one that can anoint you today is Jesus Christ. You are watching Woman of Power TV Omaha. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you will see my information. And I want to tell you today, if you seek Jesus, you will find him. If you knock on his door, he will open it for you. Same time, same place. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you today a prayer. Jesus, I pray that you will touch someone today that is watching this program. Bless them in a mighty way. Uh, God, I know that if you, hallelujah, if you allow them, Jesus, that if you allow them to give themselves to you, that you will take over their life. And I know that today. Same time, same place. Hallelujah. Have a great weekend. This is Woman of Power, TV Omaha. God bless you.